Good evening. Good evening. What a neat crowd. Thanks for all coming out amongst the bugs. It's a pleasure to introduce a good friend of mine. I knew his, his grandma. I knew his dad real well. Still do know his dad. And for the past 20 some years, I've known Chris. And he kind of has always been there when I needed him. We were building a uh, the pavilion out at the village. And a guy and I were up on ladders trying to put big beams between the braces and basically killing ourselves. Made one call and Sheffer showed up with a lift, <laughs> an automatic lift. Got it out there and it was one inch that between the poles where it would go right up and we could stand on this lift and put the beams up. That's the kind of help these guys have always provided me with. So here's Chris to talk about the family history, the fairy history, and uh, with further ado, Chris. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate it. Thank you, very much. Thank, you. And, uh, thank you all for coming. I see some very familiar faces. I used to pitch pennies with John DeRosa here on Mackinac Island when we were when we were working the docks back in Back in. <laughs> Back in the 20s. Oh, yeah. what is the, yeah. I learned a lot. Yeah, and, and grew up with Sam Staffin in the back of the room. Um, I've known Sam my uh, Sam whole life, as well as some other names, Ronnie <laughs> Paulquette, David Darrow, um, you know, a bunch of uh, hammerheads from, from way back <laughs> when. But I'm third generation uh, owner-operator of Shepler's Mackin Island Ferry Service, and I know you all know that we sold the business two years ago. Um, I still stay on as, as part owner um, and still the president of the, of the company. My brother is still involved with the company um, uh, and a part owner as well and still working. Uh, my sister who was in the office, she decided to uh, step away. So she's no longer a part or working for the company and my dad uh, still calls every day and wants to know what's going on. <laughs> not, not unusual. Um, my, my father's 93 years old, my mom's 88, and they're both at home in Harbor Springs, Goodhart more specifically, right along the beach, and, and uh, I saw them yesterday, and they're doing well. My dad is as ornery as can be, and, and uh, he's had a couple of health uh, hiccups, and it's uh, mostly self-inflicted, uh, so, so you say, a broken hip, which he, that was the second one that, uh, that he had broken on the same side and still didn't really listen to the, uh, to the doctors on what he should or should not do and did what he wanted. And that was push, 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 push. Yeah, I can go for a mile walk. I can do this. I can do that. And that has set him back. But he's doing great. My mom's doing great. And uh, uh, it, was a, it was a good Mother's Day to, to see them both. So Shuttler's Mackin Island Ferry Service, we have... Um, kind of made a uh, uh, 1945 is the, the year that we, we started with my grandfather. And my grandfather started the company with a six passenger speedboat called the Miss Penny, who was named after my uh, late aunt who passed away uh, with a, uh, a brain tumor uh, 40, well, it's been more than that, it's been 55 years ago. And, um, and, and, uh, Anyway, so that was the, the one of the boats, and then the other boat that was brought on shortly thereafter uh, was the uh, Fiji, which was named after my dad's fraternity in college, and um, that was kind of the the start of it all <clears throat> back then. Not really knowing where it was going to take us, or I say us, I was a twinkle in my mom. Well, no, I wasn't even a twinkle in my mom. <laughs> I, 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 I wasn't even a thought at that. I don't think my mom was even in the picture at that time. But uh, um, that was my grandfather. My grandfather was a fisherman. And talking to Roy o earlier, uh, that uh, we were kind of next door neighbors down there in that area. And we'll show some old pictures of, of that area here in a minute. Um, the, uh, the, that, I guess that's how it all started. We're going to try to, I'm going to try to remember some facts. I had some notes on, on uh, the, <clears throat> the drive, but they're not showing up on the computer. So I'll... Uh, if I don't know them, I'll make it up, and we'll, just, we'll, we'll go from there. Um, oh 
<laughs> Here we go. Yeah. So, um, so we opened in 1945. Uh, it was my grandfather's dream to always do this, uh, being a commercial fisherman, and he used to drive um, the Fisher body yacht out of Wyandotte or out of uh, Detroit area for the Fisher uh, family. And from there, um, uh, met my grandmother who uh, lived here in Mackinac City and, and ended up sticking around here and I, again, fish. And then when he got away from that, this was, this was his dream. Uh, Shepherd's Ferry has, you know, we've weathered trials and tribulations emerging as a vital lifeline connecting the mainland to the picturesque Mackinac Island for tourists and residents alike. And, that has, has uh, always been kind of our focus, our dream. It's always about the guests and the guest experience and, and how we treat the guest and, and how that whole system works with guests being the, the, the top priority. And, and right behind that top priority is our, our cast members and making sure that they've got the tools and training and everything that they need to, uh, you know, to do what they do. And that is... Uh, handle people, uh, a lot of people, throughout the six, the next six months uh, during the summertime. Some stats today versus uh, maybe 60 years ago. Um, if you look at the passengers, uh, you know, we say a thousand passengers back in the, the early 50s um, versus we're, we're running about 650,000 people today over a six month period of time with seven boats. And um, uh, that has grown considerably. Uh, we have um, uh, roughly 7,729 round trips every year, and that's out of St. Ignace and Mackinac City, not just Mackinac, but combined ports. Where uh, back in 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 you know the 50s, we were at 1,700. In 2024. Uh, this year, we can park 3,700 cars uh, on our property, whether that, that's now Mackinac City and St. Ignace, with our largest parking lot, believe it or not, is up in St. Ignace. And then our second largest parking lot is the one we just built uh, off of Nicolet. Um, currently, Shepler's employs about 220 cast members during the summertime, of which 50 of those are FTEs or full-time employees, and that includes our Marine Service, with our full staff in, in the office in Mackinac City, and we carry a full staff up in, um, in, uh, in St. Ignace as well in the office. And everyone says, well, why do you carry a full staff in the, in the wintertime? We're pretty busy in the wintertime organizing, whether that be you know, the marketing plan, whether that be uh, travel shows that we go to, whether that be um, our chief safety officer, making sure that what he is organizing is correct and it's timely and and everyone's on board and have bought into his program so and that stretches as far as homeland security which has become a, a, a real hot topic in the last five years of of making sure that that the people that travel to and from Mackinac Island are um, not going to do anything to not only the vessel but the people on board so uh, that's a, a, a tough thing to get your arms around, and, and the Coast Guard, as well as the Michigan State Police and the FBI, are doing a, a, a really good job. We had, if you saw in the paper last year, we did a, uh, um, a, a, a evacuation off of Mackinac Island off British Landing, and that's just one of the type of things that we do, whether that's it's, uh, shooter exercises where you have a live shooter on a boat, what do you do? You know, if you have a live shooter on the dock, what do you do? And we've been training um, with those agencies to make sure that we are all ready to, uh, to, to, to handle those type of situations. The most current situation that, that we're, we're uh, finding right now that uh, I was just on a conference call with the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce, and they have their big event on Mackinac Island here in a couple of weeks. Um, actually, the Tuesday after Memorial Day, which is the Detroit Regional Chamber of Commerce uh, uh, convention basically on Mackinac policy conference is what they call it and it's been every year and it's uh, well uh, attended by whether it's senators representatives uh, <laughs> business people Mark Cuban to uh, Tom Izzo to Mia Hamm to um, 
uh, Mr. Balmer from LA who owns the Clippers and several other things. Uh, and what's nice about that is my job when all that comes down is I'm the I'm the uh, shuttle driver to and from the airport. So I get to talk to all these people and it's some very interesting conversations. But uh, um, so with that conference, we had a, a security meeting on the protests, the protests that we see at, for instance, Columbia University, because they are planning something. We don't know what that is. We don't know how intense it'll be, but they are planning to, uh, to, to be uh, in our area uh, both here uh, in the city, um, and I would say St. Ignace, but 99% of the people that travel to this convention, it goes through Mackinac City. So they're more focused there and, of course, on the island. So um, uh, we have another call in a couple weeks to, to see what Facebook, what social media is saying out there, um, if there's any tweaks and things that, are, that, that pop up that kind of uh, alert us to what may happen or may not happen uh, during those four days of being on the island. But enough of that. Um, so uh, our use of gallonage of diesel fuel every year is 500,000 gallons. We buy those in a, in, in a futures form. So we bought the gallons that we're using right now two years ago. And uh, we really hit it out of the park during COVID when we bought diesel fuel for 94 cents a gallon. And we bought two years of it. And I remember talking to uh, Barney Castle, uh, Mr. McCarthy, and he's, tell he's telling me all this, and I'm like, yeah, this sounds great, this sounds great, but I don't even know if we're gonna be open next year, you know, during the, the Mays and the Junes of that 2020 year. And we pulled the trigger on it, and you know, we, we look pretty smart after, after <laughs> things have evolved the way they have. Um, this is, uh, I don't know the circa of this, but it's, uh, this right here is my grandfather, Cap, and this is my grandmother, and this guy's smoking on the boat, which is completely illegal, <laughs> so we need to figure that out. Uh, but anyway, I, I'm not sure who the other three are, but this is uh, on Mackinac Island, I know for sure, and I'm sure they were on Mackinac Island having dinner and drinks, and they were probably headed back, but... Uh, um, yeah, that's a cool picture that we found as we were combing through everything. This is the Humbar dock. So if you know where Mr. Legio has his dock just behind the hook, that dock is this dock. It looks a little different nowadays than, than it did back then. But uh, this, this boat's the Miss Penny and this is the Fiji. We've got the uh, Miss Margie, which was the first of our two cabin cruisers named after my grandmother. And we have a Miss Margie now that runs to and from the island. And that was a 24 passenger cabin cruiser. As you can see, the, the Fiji and the Miss Penny are open air, you know, taking spray, rain, all of that stuff. So we, as we grew, we needed a cabin to protect people from the, the, the weather. So that's uh, when my grandfather built the Miss Margie and, um, and then came the Billy Dick after that. It looks very much like the Miss Margie just a little bigger. <clears throat> These are the two boats. Um, Dad's driving one, and my grandfather's driving the other, and uh, it's just out here on the Straits of Mackinac. And this is where the hook is, basically. So where you see the hook, this is the uh, was our ticket office. This is the dock that we just saw with the, the two boats, little boats on this side, and the Miss Margie sitting here. And the railroad dock on the uh, behind where the Chief of Wadham came in and where the big red boat IMMM sits today. So that's what that looks like. Um, I, I don't remember this. I was yet to, I'm 60, I'll be 62 in June. So this was before me and it was born in 62. So this is time, sometime around the late, mid to late 50s. And this was our ticket office. My grandmother made hot dogs and sold pies and things of that sort. <laughs> just to make ends meet. And um, so, yeah, those are the, the humble beginnings. And when the, when the chief was in full, and Sam and Roy and you, all you that were here, remember when the chief came in and it was blown east, we would, you know, you'd walk around for a couple hours, then you'd have black mustache, you'd have some black on your chin, and your hair would turn gray, or because of the soot, it was coal fired. And uh, when it blew east, it blew right over the town of uh, the village of Mackinac City. And uh, 
and and and, and made a mess when it and made a mess when when it went west. It wasn't bad because it all Pablo Island had to deal with that, and not <laughs> us, which was which was nice. And luckily, that was the prevailing wind. This is one of our signs in in that area, and. Uh, See, day parking has gotten cheaper. We're, we're free day parking now. Overnight's yeah, changed just a little bit. We don't need to worry about that. But that was one of the original signs of, of, of our business. And, and um, the ticket office, I, I don't think that's my grandmother like back chicken. there. But that's, uh, yeah, that's what, that's what it looks like. We have two ticket sellers right here in, in our front row. That we're three. Working. Three, I'm sorry. <laughs> And um, oh, shoot. so, yeah, that's a little different than what it looks like today. And, and if you notice the departures, you start at nine, you're done by seven. I love that schedule. <laughs> and, um, but that's, yeah, that's, that was located in that white building right where the hook uh, is now. Uh, a group of knuckleheads here. Um, this is my dad here. And, and I, I want to say, I'm not positive, but I want to say that's Donnie Bell. And Roy, maybe you can help me out with that. I, I, I wasn't sure. And I, I have to get a little closer. Yeah, I was, yeah. wasn't sure if I should say that or not because I'm, I'm not positive. But I know my dad and Donnie were good friends back then and used to hang out all the time. Um, you know, whether he was working for us on the dock or he was, uh, they were just swimming or, or, or doing whatever whatever it is they, they did. And um, you can see the truck. Is, uh, is is got a billboard on the side of the truck, um, so we started hauling passengers to and from Mackinac Island, and then from there uh, we started giving tours of the bridge, and um, and then from there um, we went back to running people to Mackinac Island in a charter service. I grew up when I was born in '62. I grew up in a rusted out trailer right behind our main office, our double deck office, where the fuel tank is now. <laughs> we had, uh, we, we had a, this blue and white trailer that uh, we lived in, and um, it was great in the summertime, because you, you'd have, I, I'd have a, a playground, you know, the size of Lake Huron, and, and, and it was just a, it was a blast, hanging with all my, all my friends, and, and not doing much other than eating ice cream cones and swimming. And then when the fall came, when it would blow out of the northeast or out of the out of the, the the north, the waves would crash onto the the dock that extends out there, and then blow up onto the onto the trailer. And that was a little spooky at the beginning because the you know this thing would just be shaken. But as I learned, as soon as the water would hit, it would freeze. So pretty soon we were glued to the dock. And I don't care if you had a hurricane or whatever, you weren't going to go anywhere because you were glued to the dock. The only bad part about that is that we had to go out the lee side of the, the trailer. We had to open up the window. We didn't have a door on that side. We had to open up the window, crawl through the window, and, and do whatever else we had to do. The, the you know, pretty much breakfast, lunch, and dinner were pancakes and eggs and humble beginnings and remember my grandfather getting up at two or three in the morning, depending, uh, and taking folks that would come up from, whether it's Detroit or Chicago or Indianapolis, Cincinnati, and uh, jump on the boat, and he would, he would take them over and, and, uh, and come back, and sometimes he'd have a bottle of scotch uh, <laughs> on the boat, and, and sometimes he wouldn't, depending on how, uh, how how, how hard my grandmother yelled at him. <laughs> he got that. And then this is this, the, from the water looking at um, kind of our dock. Again, this is, the, this is where the hook would be. Uh, Bell's Fishery um, in that same area. And uh, you can see the speedboats here lined up. And uh, the Greyhound sign back here. And... Uh, if you start noticing, these are all tanks here, and that was the old Standard Oil uh, petroleum farm. And uh, we, we used to have tankers come in and drop off fuel and pipes that ran down the state dock and would fuel, would fuel these, and then you would have tankers come in. I remember Dwayne Darrow, who uh, um, ran oil for Standard Oil in a big big truck and I used to hang out with he and his son David at the time and and we would ride around with them you know dropping fuel off whether it was 
the Carp Lake General Store, you know, or uh, wherever else, any gas stations around, we would do that. But this is where the fuel came from. The state ferries in the background, um, hauling cars, vehicles to and from uh, the upper peninsula to the lower peninsula before the bridge. And um, I don't know who's fueling the Fiji. Um, I'm not sure, but that's a Fiji and the Miss Penny here in the picture. And, and there's that little sign that says, you know, 24 hour taxi. And that's, <laughs> that's basically what it, what, it, what it was back then. Again, another picture of the car ferries loading up or unloading here in Mackinac City at the state dock. And there was a reason this came in. Well, oh, there, I got it right here. This picture right here, you can see the roof line of the Billy Dick right here. And this is the sign on top of the of the um, of the cabin that stated uh, tours of the Mackinac Bridge. As I mentioned before, that's kind of what we did when uh, we got out of the Mackinac City uh, to and from. We, we did tours, tours of the bridge. And that's my dad and my grandfather uh, with the Miss Margie. And I believe that's the Fiji out in front of them. And um, I have no idea how old they are, but uh, that was, I would, again, would say that is the late 50s because I was yet not born yet. And when we moved from here over to the dock that we're on, it was uh, mid to late 50s when that happened. And that was a handshake between Ford Martin and my grandfather that the city, the village of Mackinac City were to allow us to dock there. Of course, there would be a lease. And we've had that lease for... You know, since the since the the, the late fifties, and, uh, and and we've had it ever since, and have developed it over the years. But we're so, we're so very grateful to uh, to Ford Martin, and uh, and and I remember Ford like it was yesterday, and Denny as well, and they um, built, and we'll, we'll get into that some of the marina stuff that we have that that uh, an old travel lift that that uh, they built a ramp for and, and then rebuilt the ramp for our bigger travel lift. But anyway, that's, uh, that's Grandpa and Dad. Miss Margie, and there's that coal-fired Chief Wadham billowing smoke <laughs> on the Mackinac City. That's another angle of the Miss Margie. She's smaller than the Billy Dick. You can tell, well, I can tell that she's uh, that's the Miss Margie because of how short and stocky she is versus the Billy Dick's another, I think, another four <coughs> feet than bigger than, than the Miss Margie. And right behind it is the, um, is the, the railroad dock. So the dock that had the Chief Wadham and the railroad cars going to and from and, and across uh, uh, Huron Avenue where the old Kenville's used to be, for those of you that remember Kenville's. And uh, this is the Miss Margie. Now, this building that it's in is still standing down in our marine service. So it's just north of, of our, our, our dock where we dock. There's the marina in between the, uh, our dock marina and then our, uh, the railroad dock. And then our marine facility is right there. This building still stands. Um, we've replaced a few pieces due to uh, just <laughs> getting you. old. But uh, my grandfather built the Miss Margie, the Billy Dick, the Miss Penny, and the um, Fiji all in this, this little boat. Now, they were kit boats, so it's not like he built them from hand. They would come to him in a kit, and, and then he would put them together. And this is the old travel lift that, uh, that Ford Martin, he had a marine construction building in town, and he had a, a, an old tugboat called the Haskell. It was old red vintage one of the coolest boats you'll ever see i'm not sure where it is or even if it's still around but that barge and tug built the ramp that the travel lift goes out onto that uh that we would lift boats back then then we got a bigger travel lift to haul out our fleet 
and we had to go bigger. And uh, I remember they did it all on the ice where they would have all the equipment out on the ice, drilling through the ice, into the water, into the, the bottom, because it's all bedrock right there. You, you, we had to drill holes and then cement the, the steel pipes into those holes that would, you know, ho house the, where the, the travel lift would go out onto. So it would, that was the track. And <clears throat> this is the Miss Margie. I'm not sure if she's going in or coming out, but that's an oldie but goodie right there. My grandfather, this is the Ferry Isle. Um, this is the, a, a boat that he used to captain uh, long back in the 50s and ran passengers to and from the island. But it wasn't our boat. It was, I think he leased it at the time. And you, the railroad dock is in the, uh, uh, through the, the, forward, the forward hatch there. This is a, I think it's 70, no, it can't be 70. This is, I would say, in the, I can't even see the date. I'm not even sure it's on there. Um, 67? 67? Yeah. So, you know, yeah. we ran 67. So we ran till 7 at night, and we'd start at 8.30 in the morning. Currently, we run at 7.30 in the morning, we start. And we run until our last boat off the island is, I believe, 11 o'clock at night. And this, now it starts April 21st. Back then, it was May 24th. And we would go, it stops now on eight, October 8th, we go till the, the 31st. That's our contact contract with the city of Mackinac Island. We have a franchise through them that allows us to bring people to Mackinac Island. Back then, I didn't even know that there was a franchise. I don't think my dad even knew there was a franchise, and we weren't really regulated by any means. That, that has all changed. And um, we are regulated by the island, and uh, we have to pass whether it's fares and or schedules through them for them to okay before we can start the season. And this schedule, my Capitan, what a disaster she was. This is uh, one of our first boats. We, we had the, the two little boats, Miss Margie and the, and the, and the uh, Billy Dick, and we needed to go to the next level. Speed was obviously something that people wanted to get to Mackinac Island. Arnold Transit at the time were they were running six or seven boats to and from the island, not boats, but trips. And uh, they were, you know, 50 minute long one way trips, um, sometimes an hour, depending on weather, where we could make that trip a little quicker. So that was, um, that was kind of our deal and, and started to move people over to us. So we hired um, a, uh, an architect, promised the world and gave us I'm not sure what he gave us, but it was called the Mine Capitan, and it's 120 passengers. It was underpowered. It wasn't a planing hull. It was steel. Uh, it was condemned by the Coast Guard, and, and the only way we got out of that condemning, we had, um, I remember this like it was yesterday. We were on the beach um, just north of us, kind of between the tower and our office, and we were filling sandbags. Because all we could do is put sandbags in the back, in the in the bottom, in the engine room to keep the thing sturdy, and it was Commander Drinkwater out of Saint Ignace, who who was the one that that uh, that uh, said the boat was stable and and got the stability letter from the Coast Guard. Everything's fine, and uh, so my dad is down, and I was sitting on the back deck. I'll never forget it. He's we're passing sandbag 50 pound sandbags and we're trying to place them and watch the water line see where they see where it goes there was no measurement there was no calculation it was just yeah that looks good yeah that looks good and drink water came down and pulled the certificate and my dad was like you can't do that you're the one that certified this boat so if you're going to pull the certificate we're suing you we're suing the united states why wow, you can't do that well yeah we're going to because you sir you said it was fine Long story short, that uh, ended up in, uh, in court, and uh, we won, but we had to change the dynamics of the boat, and we couldn't load as many people on the top deck, um, and uh, it was a 35-minute ride to Mackinac Island, and uh, she smoked, and it was ugly, and, and uh, it wasn't the smartest thing we, we've ever done. And then this is a picture of her leaving right out in front of our office, and obviously the chief of Wadham in the in the background. 
But uh, yeah, she was um, yeah, she was interesting <laughs> to say to say the least. And there she is leaving. You can tell she's not getting up on planes. She's just going to be a displacement boat. But we sold it to Rodney Vorlock down in uh, in St. Thomas, and um, she made the trip down. Spent five years running between the islands in the Caribbean, and sunk in a, in a hurricane. Now then, when I was at the dock, sunk there, and and uh, was pretty much uh, left for for um, for trash. Really, <laughs> Lakeview Transit. Does anybody remember Lakeview Transit? Lakeview Transit was Harry Riva when there was Straits Transit, Arnold Transit, Shufflers. And Harry Riva wanted to get his foot in the ferry boat service. And he bought the property that was, that was between our gateway. And then the next lot was Harry Riva's. And then we owned the next lot over, which was by Betty O'Brien's in, in the end of Etherington Street. So he owned that parking lot there. And the dock still sits. Uh, Lakeview Transit's dock is just to the north. We don't use it. It's dilapidated. It's fallen in, um, but it's there, and that's where Harry brought his boats in. It was the Ethel Marie and the Patricia R. were the two names, and one named after his daughter and one named after his wife, and um, that lasted about three years, and then we purchased them uh, more for the lot uh, that he had because we had to, when we had a, a guest come in, he would have to turn around, go back out, kind of what we do now. But uh, we had, had to have him go around and, and park in that lot. And that was a little bit of a pain in the neck. So that was our, the, that parcel of a land was, um, was, was very important to us. So that was the reason we sold the Patricia R, kept the Ethel Marie. And um, Bob Darrow, who ran our Marine service for many, many years and just retired a couple, uh, five years ago, four years ago, he was one of our captains at the time. So because I came in with my dad, we moved to Harbor Springs, and I would come in with my father, and my dad was never really an early. He was, he was going to be late for his funeral, which is probably a good thing, but, but uh, he, he was always late. So I'd come in. I didn't get to work till 9, 30, 10 o'clock. That's about the time the Ethel Marie get fired up. So who was the crew for the summer on the Ethel Marie? No top deck. Everything was below. Two foot sea, everyone puking in the in the cabin <laughs> because there was no airflow. And Johnny, you probably yeah, I remember it was loud yeah. and you could park at the end of the dock. Yeah, and yeah. Shut, yeah. yeah. So we ended up. Um, uh, we had the Welcome at the time. Uh, our first high speed aluminum boat was called the Welcome. And um, and uh, Bill, you might remember uh, Doctor Armour. Oh, yeah, from the state park. Yeah, uh, he was uh, the chair, or the deputy director of the state park, and and he named all of our boats up until the Cap Shuffler, and then we decided to name it after uh, a family member, which we continued uh, through our last boat, the William Richard. But um, anyway, the Lakeview Transit uh, was uh, was was Harry Ribas. That was their departure. They started at 8:30 like us and ran to 7:30, so it was very similar to what we did. It was just a little slower and uh, not not quite as comfortable, if I may say that. So we sold the Ethel Marie as soon as we got the motor vessel Hope. So we went with the Welcome in '69, the Felicity in '72, '75 was the Hope, '80 was the Wyandotte. Excuse me, '78 was the Wyandotte. '80 was the Captain Shuffler. Um, the William Richard was 2015, I believe, yeah. and then uh, the the uh, Miss or the uh, William Richard, I'm sorry, Miss Margie was in 15, and then the William Richard was shortly thereafter by three years, so 2018 and 19, and that's the fleet. Um, an old schedule. That's the welcome. Um, I still remember sitting with. Uh, Randy Morris, if that name rings a bell, that was uh, uh, Randy was um, worked for us in the ticket booth, and I remember sitting out on the right out on the dock by uh, by our main office when she, my grandfather, brought it underneath the bridge, and at the time it was going 28 miles an hour, and we're running between 33 and 34 miles an hour with our fleet right now, 
and we thought that was the greatest thing since like no trim tabs the bow was like this and she was coming around my grandfather was blowing the horn and and um and then yeah that was that was something special with her that would kind of change things around for how we how we operated and uh and the service to Mackinac island and there's the welcome back then we used to haul the boats out and set them on the dock on uh, right out in front of our office in between the gateway and our main office we had mcnally nimbergood from the crane company from saginaw would come up and do just this and we would crib them and and um and, and put them put them right on the dock our old fare schedule in 19 1980 it was uh adult round trip was 525 <laughs> one, one way was 425 um yeah some really funny numbers there i, I guess i won't go on because things are a little, a little different than back then obviously and then our old ticket offices this is where our, our current ticket office is it was being built back then and these were our two offices rose la point that was her her place of residence for the summer um and uh where nelson would come down and say hi every once in a while and and my grandmother so it was either rose or my grandmother in there and then our t-shirt shop which kind of handled all of our valet systems um out of that which I say systems, there was no systems. It was all, you know, handwriting and exchanging paper. Um, we used to store boats over in the, in the day lot or our premium lot now. You can see those boats here. Obviously, we don't do that now. We got them out on the railroad dock um, out by the marina. And they did wear short shorts back then. <laughs> and this was ramp number one. Um, that's the first ramp that you come to on our dock right now, which looks a, a lot different than what it does now. But the welcome loading for a trip to Mackinac Island. Don't know, I wish I knew the, the year that my grandfather was a parade marshal for the Memorial Day Parade. And that's he and my grandmother. I want to say that's Perry Tarion, but I'm not sure. Dick, uh, Dick Mascow, it looks like. Does, is that who that is? Yeah. Okay. Um, Anyway, so I still have this little sign in my office that I uh, rummaging through when we redid the office, all the files and things, and had that had had that in my office. And he was so proud of, of being named the Grand Marshal, the Parade Marshal of that parade. He couldn't stop talking about it. And there's Ford himself, Ford Martin, and my dad. Um, they're probably talking about how they're going to build the new ramp for the new travel lift coming in. But uh, yeah, Ford was a dear friend of our families and, and uh, Martin still remained friends of our, our family, Steve and his wife. And so Herrick Fehrenbach, who remembers, anyone remember that name? Yeah, I yeah, bought yeah. a camera from him. You bought a what? A camera. A camera, does it still work? The third new, that's with <laughs> Nikon, yeah, I have three. So this is Herrick Fehrenbach, yeah. who ran the uh, Chamber of Commerce here in Mackinac City for many years. And then uh, I'm not sure who this is. That's my dad, and that's me. And um, it looks like it's fall, and uh, we, ju we just hauled the boats out after a summer long of doing that. This is Ford Martin's barge back here, and we used to sell fuel on the dock years ago. And then the state, when they put in the straight state park, they were selling fuel for 11, 12 cents cheaper than what we could because of their bulk buy. So we uh, pulled the tanks and said we were done, done selling fuel. Uh, yeah, that's me um, driving Bill Crane's boat. If you all remember Bill Crane, the Adventure 3, that's, uh, that's his boat. And um, I don't know why that, that uh, picture was taken. But anyway, that's me hanging out on Mr. Crane's boat. This is the Cap Shuffler being built down in Lafitte, Louisiana. Um, now, uh, our last two boats were built here in northern Michigan and, and on a way by, uh, by Moran Ironworks, the manufacturer down there. But prior to that, there, were no, there was no Moran Ironworks here in northern Michigan that would build a, a ferry boat. So we had to go down to the bayou where all the, all the crew boats were being built for the oil rigs. And that's really the design of the Welcome, was a crew boat hull 
with power to get it up on plane and to run at a certain speed. Um, and that's how all of these these were designed. But Cap Shepler, this is probably circa 1978, 77, somewhere around in there. And then this is all the boats, all four of them at least, that we had. We've got the Welcome, the Felicity, the Hope, and the Wyandotte all sitting on our dock uh, for the winter. Now this boat, the Hope and the Wyandotte were both lengthened. We lengthened uh, the Hope by 15 feet, the Wyandotte by 6 feet, and the Captain Shuffler by 6 feet, coupled with repowering all of them in that process, putting more horsepower in the, in the engine room to, to make sure that we got the speed that, uh, that we so desired. And, um, and the two ticket offices here to the right. And this is what our luggage system looked like back then. <laughs> yeah, we, this is where we put our luggage. We, we didn't have any tents, and we didn't have any anything. We didn't know what the hell we were doing. But, but we'd take the, the luggage and put it right by where the fuel pumps were. Here's the old Gulf uh, fuel sign, and the pump's right here, and that would be our, our luggage. And this was not a, an ordinary day. This is obviously a very, very busy day, but... The confusion of it all with cars trying to back out and all of that is and then the tour buses which we've always um, carried a bunch of tour buses to Mackinac Island and tour groups to Mackinac Island and um, but this was how we handled luggage back then which is a little different than how we handle luggage now <laughs> and that's the gateway that's what the gateway looked like back then flowers still remain but that's that was our entrance and uh, and ticket offices here in the gazebo. If it rained, someone would have a or the greeter would have a chance to get out of the rain. But that's that's that. And then the ticket office would go right here. And then our canopies would go right along this side here. Just another picture of that. The old Dustin Garage, which is our current car care center, which is down on, uh, on, on Huron, I believe, I want to say that's Dwayne Darrow. I'm not positive about that, but he ran our car care center for many, many, many years after he finished up with, they had a hotel on Huron as well, which I believe now is the Legio headquarters right there, that building was a hotel that Dorothy and Duane used to run. And after they finished being innkeepers, he came to work for us. And, and um, that garage is still orange and white in the back. The front is more blue now. But anyway, um, that's where we housed. Uh, we, we could you know, take care of the facilities on the motor coach. We washed and, and fueled and whatever a mechanic here and there. <clears throat> Wintertime in Mackinac City, this was probably I would say 19, late 70s, here with all the snow, we're not, we don't seem to get that much anymore. But that was Herrick's big thing, because he was our kind of our marketing director. Closed, reason freezing, hoping to open May 1st. And that, was, that was his saying. May 1st. And then this is what it looks like today, obviously. Mackinac Island, we, uh, this dock here has been redone. It was about this long when we bought it from Louis Yellen, if that name rings a bell. Um, he owned that property, which was just 40 feet of Main Street. And, and we just had a, a, like a, a 25 foot wide dock and it went out maybe 120 feet into the water. And that was where the Billy Dick and the Miss Margie dock now this is after the last renovation we did. We, we put this pod in right here to house people when it rains or they want to get out of the sun. This pod over here is for luggage, whether it's incoming or outgoing. Um, that's where it all goes and then gets dispersed there. Um, we, did, we did have a, a freight service that we sold to Danny Musser and Veronica Dobrowski, which is now still Arnold Freight. But we used to come in here, right here, with a boat called the Sacre Blue, which we sold to Danny and Veronica, which is now called the Senator. We made this area here much 
more robust for the east wind, especially when it comes to ice in the spring. When you get flows of ice and, 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 and 40 knots of breeze behind that, it can be very, very dangerous. And, uh, and then we added five feet of width to the north side of that dock. And that was four years ago that we did that. And then this is the, the christening of the, of the William Richard where, um, where we, uh, my dad, you know, broke the champagne over the bow. It was a very cool day for him. And uh, his quick story, um, William Richard, Billy Dick, right? He's like, uh, when we asked him if he would allow us to name our next boat after him, he was like, yeah, I think that'd be a good idea. Billy Dick. And we're like, ah, that, you know. I'm not so sure about that's a proper name. He's like, what do you mean? Billy Dick. Call it to Billy Dick. And we're like, you've been on social media before. And so we, uh, we compromised and, and did it the full William Richard for, for obvious reasons. <laughs> and I think I maybe have ran over, and I apologize for that, but thank you very much. If there's any questions, Any questions for Chris? Two-parter. Yeah. What do you like most about the job, and what do you find the most challenging? I, I think the, the most challenging is what I like the best is our cast members. I love working for who I work with, and uh, I, I think that's the, the coolest part. We got an amazing team and have had an amazing team who do nothing but focus on our guests and, and what they can do for the company. And it's, it's a selfless thought process by all of them, 100% of them. So that's my favorite part of the job. I, I think my least favorite is government. And, and um, yeah, to, to be honest, it's probably not appropriate for me to say that, but it, it, can, it, can, be, it can be very, very challenging. Well, as a former cast member, I think you do a fantastic job. Thank you, John. Yeah, and you've gotten the staff is way better now. <laughs> yeah. No, you were pretty good. <laughs> At times. Yes. I have to tell you, after you mentioned Rose LaPoint, I said, Rose, you're famous. We had you in the program. She was 31 years, best job I've ever had. Great people to work for. So Rose LaPoint. Well, Rose LaPoint's a superstar. Oh, yeah. uh, and, and Nelson's right there with her. Yes. Yeah. Thank you for that. Anybody else? There are multiple people sitting in this room tonight. I won't point them all out, but Chris, myself, are working right now with a whole ton of different people to completely renovate the old railroad dock. And a uh, <clears throat> massive project. We haven't gotten as far as we'd like to, but uh, eventually the home of the Cutter Mackinac the, the dock itself will still, of course, belong to the Huffman Group, but we're trying to get that entire dock, including renovating that old A-frame. The A-frame is one of the only ones standing in the country. As you know, the one in St. Ignace fell in the water about five, six years ago. So we are uh, we're trying to get all that renovated. It's going to be a huge project, but Chris, through the Hoffman Group, is working with us all group of here. We've got state politicians working on it, federal politicians. So uh, hopefully someday we're going to see. We will get that done. I, I, my contract with the Hoffman family is up March 18th of 2025. So really that's when I make my last trip down the dock and, and uh, that'll be it for me. Um, I'm not sure what the Hoffman family has in store in the future. So uh, maybe they w will want me to stay longer, and maybe I won't want to stay long. I don't know. It just depends on what my wife and I, we haven't really started that discussion. But one of my goals is to make sure that that maritime thought process that Bill was just talking about happens. And it starts with the Hoffman donating and or <laughs> leasing uh, that dock to, um, to IMMM so IMMM can go after uh, grants and funds uh, and, and get that place fixed up and be a, a true maritime walk, um, which would be second to none. So that's that's our goal to do that. And with this gentleman's, you know, steadfast, he doesn't, he tell him no, it's like, oh, <laughs> watch this, you know. So we're, we're working on it very hard. Uh, any other questions for Chris? 
I hope you folks have enjoyed, those of you who've been to a lot of them this year, we've done this history a lot of the businesses, and we're going to continue that. We decided in our meeting the other day to continue that theme. I think in the next couple of months, we've got Edgar Audrey Yegi talking about the history of Audis. Then we've got uh, Dennis Cawthorn is going to do the history of the uh, State Park Commission and on and on with more businesses through the end of this year. And we've already started lining them up. Um, as you know, the Historic Society is not funded by anything other than donations. So sign up, Mary Ann, raise your hand. We also do a fundraising raffle every year and Mary Ann has tickets with her. <laughs> she will be glad to sell you some tickets. It's one of our biggest fundraisers and come out to Heritage Village. It is a marvelous, marvelous reconstruction of the history from 1917, I'm sorry, from 1880 to 1917. You'll even catch some of the faces in this room messing around out there in costume. So uh, thank you for coming, Chris. Really appreciate it, buddy. Well, thank you very much. And there are some goodies in the back. We did have someone ask when the boats start coming out of the water in yeah. the fall. Yeah, when, when they start. Yeah. We generally, our last day of operation is October 31st. So and shortly after. Well, and sometimes even before. Yeah. You, you know, the boats, the two boats that will come out first will be the Welcome and the Felicity, our two smallest boats that really aren't used when we slow down to where we are in the end of October. So they'll come out first to let the guys start getting them winterized. And then that'll, you know, within, by November 5th or 6th, they're, they're all out of the boat, all, all out of the water. It's pretty quick time. Yeah, it does happen pretty quick, yeah. Yeah, sure. I think that was the only question we had on the list. All right. Well, have a great evening, Thanks everyone. Again. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Well done, young man. That's your It must have came out of your jacket. It was probably a tip to be left.